A greenhouse is a dream of many gardeners because many gardeners think that having a greenhouse allows you to garden all year round. But it's not that simple. There's a lot more to greenhouses and a lot of limitations you might not be aware of. Join me today as I discuss just how a greenhouse works. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I'm a Colorado Zone 5B gardener, which means my greenhouse will be exposed to average low winter temperatures of minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty cold. This is an unheated greenhouse. Now, if I had lights and heat, I could easily garden year round. But because there isn't heat and there isn't supplemental lighting, I'm actually quite limited in what I can do in this greenhouse. Greenhouses aren't magical. That's the first thing to realize. It's just a structure in the garden. I've gardened in greenhouses in Colorado before, an unheated greenhouse specifically. So I understand already how weather and the temperature changes affect the temperature inside the greenhouse. But this is the first year that I'll be gardening in this greenhouse. So I wanted to see just exactly how efficient it is at maintaining temperatures. So over the course of 24 hours, I tracked the temperature changes on a typical winter's day with the sun up. And here's what I found. The sun is just beginning to come up and it's pretty chilly in here. Outside, it's 36 degrees Fahrenheit. In the greenhouse, it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The sun has been up for about an hour now. There's some light clouds in the sky. The outside temperature is 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside the greenhouse, it's 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Another hour has gone by. It's just mid-morning. Outside air temperature is 49 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside the greenhouse, it's 103 degrees. My greenhouse has some windows for venting, so let's go ahead and open the vents now. And I'll do the same on the other side, and we'll see how this affects the temperature. It's early afternoon now, and with the vents open, it's cooled off dramatically. The outside air temperature is 54 degrees Fahrenheit. That's going to be the high for the day. And the temperature inside the greenhouse is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. It's late afternoon now. The sun is getting much lower in the sky and the shade is beginning to touch the greenhouse. So I'm gonna go ahead and close these vents. This will help hold in some heat. It's 50 degrees outside right now, and it's been stable inside at 69 degrees for a couple hours. The sun is just about to set, and the greenhouse has been in the shade for about an hour. The outside air temperature is 43 degrees and the inside temperature is 48 degrees. It's been four hours since sunset. The outside air temperature right now is 35 degrees Fahrenheit and the temperature inside the greenhouse is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. I really wasn't surprised by the results of that little bit of a 24-hour test. You might be, and this is where understanding how a greenhouse works can really benefit your planning when it comes to growing in a greenhouse. I know that the greenhouse gets hot when exposed to a lot of sun, but I also know that it can get very cold when exposed to cold nighttime temperatures. It should come as no surprise that the exterior of the greenhouse is transparent. 
Now, for many, many years, greenhouses were made out of glass, and you can still find glass greenhouses. But more and more, they're being made out of these man-made materials like these polycarbonate panels. You can get the same effect of a greenhouse with just hoops and sheets of plastic over those hoops. Regardless, whatever the material is, it's transparent. That allows the sun's rays to shine through to the inside. And this is where the magic of a greenhouse really begins to happen because of the magic of science. As these light rays come through and there's ultraviolet radiation passing into the greenhouse, well, the ground begins to warm. The structure begins to warm. Through radiant heat, the air begins to warm. And as that happens, as that light energy strikes a plant, or soil, or rock, or whatever's in the greenhouse, and is released back into the air as heat, the wavelength changes. And so what used to be a transparent covering that allowed light through, well, the wavelengths are now longer. And so those waves of heat can't escape. So this transparent structure actually becomes like an insulator holding in all of that heat. Glass is a pretty good thermal insulator. That's why it's been used for so long in greenhouses, because it helps hold in the heat. Another good thermal insulator is air, and that's the idea behind these polycarbonate greenhouse panels. They actually use two layers of polycarbonate with air in between, which makes this a pretty good insulator. And that's why I see such a dramatic increase in the heat in this greenhouse in the morning. Because when that morning sun shines through and begins to heat up this space, well, there's nowhere for that heat to go. It's held in by this thermal insulator shell of a greenhouse. And then it just keeps building up and building up and building up. Until I release the heat, I will see temperatures above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, even when the outside temperature is less than half that amount. Not understanding that greenhouse effect, how the temperatures keep rising and rising when they can't escape, is a common mistake of many first-time greenhouse growers. So they end up baking their plants, frying the plants to death because the temperature just gets too high. That's why when I chose this greenhouse, I chose a model with the windows and the doors at both ends to help lower the temperature during the day when the plants are going to be actively growing. And I'll actually be adding some extra ventilation windows at the top so that the temperature doesn't get too high even in summer. Because I found at the Galileo greenhouse, the 42-foot dome, even with fans and ventilation, the inside temperature would often be 20 degrees Fahrenheit above the outside air temperature, which meant many days in summer in my region got extremely hot, to the point that we'd have to put shade inside the greenhouse, large shade cloths to help cut down on that thermal energy coming from the sun that was causing all of the energy gain to start with. At this point, you're probably thinking, well, if a greenhouse is so effective at getting hot and staying hot, then why does it get so cold at night, often colder than the outside air? Well, the glass and the polycarbonate are not perfect insulators. They will let some of the heat escape. And once it's colder outside, well, the heat in here wants to escape to that cold. And because these are pretty effective thermal insulators, during the day, they're holding the heat in. Well, at night, they're holding the cold in. It becomes like a giant freezer. It gets cold in here and it stays cold in here until we have the sun come up and begin warming everything again. This cycle of hot in the day and cold at night is normal for unheated home greenhouses. But once we understand that that's the cycle, now we can work to break the cycle and actually get the benefits of having a greenhouse. 
So the problem is that it just gets too cold in here at night and this insulating exterior keeps it cold. If we can increase the temperature inside the greenhouse at night and keep it from cooling, now that insulating surface will help hold in some of the heat. And it begins with the soil. Right now I have a dry soil and I'm not growing anything in here. Well, dry soil does not hold heat very well at all. When we compare this compacted dry soil, it actually holds a little bit more heat than this loose cultivated soil. But as soon as I add water, things improve. So a moist soil will actually retain more heat than a dry soil. And a moist compacted soil will hold even more heat. As soon as I add a pathway of stone or brick, now that dense material will actually hold heat pretty well with the pathway. And with this soil that's moist, I can expect the inside temperature at night to be warmer. And as soon as plants are growing in here, well, the plants actually trap some of that heat from the day as it begins to rise. So the temperature will begin to be warmer at night. Understanding that water is great at holding heat, once I start adding containers that are filled with water, that water will absorb the heat during the day and release it at night. And so just by taking those few steps with moist soil, with rocky material, and with containers of water, I can help keep the air in here warmer at night and now the insulating materials help hold in that warmth. It's colder outside than inside. I can expect condensation on the inside of the greenhouse. All of those water drops help add to the insulating value of the exterior. That's how greenhouses do their job during the nighttime. And now with an understanding that the venting is important during the day so that the heat doesn't build up too much, it's also important to acknowledge that the venting is important at night. These doors and windows need to be closed to hold in that heat that has been accumulated by the wet soil, the rock, and the water. So greenhouse growers need to actually have some daily tasks where they're opening and closing the vents to try to keep the temperature inside as consistent as possible. One of the vents I'll be adding on top will actually be an automatic vent. It has a, a beeswax material in it, so the vent will open and close automatically depending on whether it gets too hot or cold. That's definitely a consideration. If you don't want to be coming in and out all night long trying to maintain the temperature, start putting in some of those automatic vents. Sunlight, of course, is what makes a greenhouse work. It's that light coming in and that infrared energy that heats everything inside. It may not be enough to actually promote the growth of plants in the winter. It may get warm enough in there, like you saw with my temperature readings, but the days still don't have enough sunlight for me to be actively growing plants. So without supplemental lighting, it just becomes an exercise in monitoring the temperature and getting those projects done inside the greenhouse during the winter. And monitoring those temperatures from the very beginning when there's nothing here until you take some of those actions to help keep the temperature warmer at night is really a good idea. And it can give you a wonderful appreciation and better understanding of how this whole process works. At the Galileo Greenhouse, we had a 1,500 gallon tank of water to help keep the temperature warmer during winter and at night. And one winter in particular, in February, for the week, we had a high temperature of eight degrees Fahrenheit. It was frigid. The coldest that it got inside the greenhouse with all of those protective measures was 24 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, able to keep the inside of the greenhouse about 20 degrees warmer 
than the outside air temperature. So I've seen it in practice. It works. You just have to take the actions to not let the bare ground lose all of its energy and instead use the benefits of the greenhouse to your advantage by just learning how to trap some of the heat at night. And I'll be showing you much of that in future videos. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>